Imagine being a football player. You go to practice every day to train in preparation to face off against your opponents. Now, during the game, you line up with everyone else on the line of scrimmage, ready to execute the plays as you've been practicing. The play starts and BAM! You are hit so hard you get a concussion. The next thing you see is a view of the sky through your helmet, followed shortly by the field medics coming over to take you off the pitch. Now, you can feel the effects of the concussion almost immediately, but your head is not the only thing that is affected. There is a strong connection between what happens in your head and in your gut. So what exactly might be going on in your gut in a scenario like this? Hi folks, my name is Cole and I have a Master's of Immunology. Today on Investigate, Explore, Discover, we're going to be looking at how sport-related concussions affect the microbiome. So hang around with me throughout this whole video to get all of the relevant background information so we can dive into some exciting experimental results. Plus, there is more information for you in the description below. Now, playing sports is something that almost everyone can relate to at some point in their lives, whether it was in gym class or through extracurricular activities. In the United States, around 60 million children and teens played a sport in the last year. Playing sports comes with many additional benefits, like helping to get a better sleep, decreasing stress, anxiety, and depression, and increasing interpersonal skills. Though there are some inherent risks with just increased physical exertion. Concussions in sports continue to be an important and growing concern in all levels of play. Though you can get a concussion from pretty much any sport, there are some where it is more common than others. As you can see from this graph, football is particularly bad. To add on top of that, it is estimated that only 1 in 9 symptom provoking concussions are reported. This is of particular importance because athletes heavily exposed to concussions exhibit impaired cognitive function and neuropathological consequences later in life. Now, concussions are more formally known as mild traumatic brain injuries and occur from many different biomechanical forces. After a concussion, it is common to have a sensitivity to light, a persisting headache, confusion, or dizziness. Nothing in your body works in complete isolation. There are other systems that are affected by what happens to the head. Intriguingly, there is a bi-directional link between the brain and the gut. This link is mediated by bacterial and human metabolites, which interact with epithelial cells in the gut. These act as a relay between the nervous system and the microbiome. Now, head trauma leads to both acute and chronic disruption of the intestinal barrier, and the subsequent appearance of endotoxin and inflammatory markers in the blood. These factors can contribute to multiple pathologies throughout the body. Furthermore, an abnormal gut composition has correlations with multiple brain and bodily diseases, like Parkinson's disease and rheumatoid arthritis. Particularly, the gut microbiome of non-professional athletes has not been studied, especially after a sports-related concussion. Now, the gut has countless bacteria present, which all interact with one another. To try and understand a little more about these links, we look at gut bacterial populations. Primarily, we look at two metrics. We look at something called alpha diversity, which measures the number of different bacterial types within a single sample, and also beta diversity, which measures the similarity of bacterial populations between samples. So groups that look more like one another will group together. In our guts, we have broadly placed bacteria into groups that are good or bad for our health. But some bacterial groups, like Lactobacillus are not as easily classified. They kind of fall into the it depends category. Regardless, to identify these bacteria, classical studies of bacterial morphology can be used, but they take a long time to complete. Molecular methods like PCR quickly amplify sequences of bacterial genomes for investigation. To accomplish this effectively, amplification of a relatively conserved sequence is needed. Now, the bacterial 16S rRNA gene is this sequence. This is because it is a stable and important gene involved in the translation of proteins. In each bacterial species, this region has a unique sequence composition. So by amplifying these sequences and sorting them, bacterial species can be identified and then compared. Now, alongside the species, metabolic pathways can also be determined by the upregulation of associated proteins in the processes. All of these changes in the body can be identified as biomarkers. By identifying certain biomarkers in the context of injury or disease, we can more accurately diagnose and treat health issues, like concussions, as they occur. For example, in professional rugby players, it has been shown that the small, non-coding RNAs in the saliva could predict the presence of concussion. 
Now, I want to take a moment and really highlight why identifying biomarker changes of regular athletes is so important. Hitting your head is never good, and there is mountains of evidence to show that repeated head impacts are linked with detrimental cognitive effects later in life. This is particularly important because there are millions of people that play contact sports, where 10-20% to 20 of them get concussions, though many of them are likely going unreported. We know that concussions are associated with systemic inflammatory molecules and altered gut compositions. Thus, developing reliable biomarkers for identifying concussions can get players off the field and getting appropriate care to prevent even more serious brain injury from occurring. If you also think that these are some important reasons to research this topic, go ahead and tap the like button. This brings us to the paper that we're focusing on today. This paper is called Alterations to the Gut Microbiome After Sport-Related Concussion in a Collegiate Football Player's Cohort, a pilot study, by Soriano et al. from Houston Methodist in Houston, Texas. In this paper, the authors sought to investigate the links between the microbiome and head injury in the context of sport-related concussions and multiple subconcussive impacts. For their study, the authors observed 33 Div 1 collegiate football players, four of whom got concussions. Samples from the athletes were collected at three time points, one in the mid-season, one immediately post-season, and one in the off-season. They looked at head measurements alongside saliva, stool, and blood samples. From the saliva and stool, they looked at bacterial populations and metabolic pathways. From the blood, they looked at serum biomarkers. Now, the authors first identified the total number of species that are present in the athlete's guts. In case you were wondering, there were 1,021 total species identified. To start the analysis, the authors looked at the non-concussed athletes who had multiple subconcussive impacts. In fact, another study found that the median number of head impacts these players got per season is around 80. During the football season, the gut microbiome was fairly stable, but in the off season, the gut composition changed slightly. Specifically, there was a decreased abundance of 17 different bacterial species. And when looking at the bacterial functions, there was a change in the degradation of sugars and aromatic compounds. In the concussed athletes, their microbiome was assessed one to two days post-concussion because it's a little crass to go to a recently concussed person and say, I know you may not be feeling well, but would you mind pooping in this jar for me real quick? Interestingly, these populations showed a greater alpha diversity and a distinct beta diversity when compared against their non-concussed teammates. This was maintained throughout the football season and was yet again distinct in the off-season. When comparing the concussed microbiomes to the non-concussed microbiomes in the off-season, Ruminococcaceae family bacterium were increased, while Lacnospiriciae family bacterium, Eubacterium rectali, and Enterostipes hadris were decreased. Now, E. rectali is an anti-inflammatory microbe, and A. hadris has anti-inflammatory properties. So losing them would cause increased inflammation. When looking at the bacterial functions, there were many changes. Notably, sugar acid degradation pathways had significantly reduced relative abundances. Now, the authors also assessed the changes in the oral microbiome. And intriguingly, there was no marked difference between the alpha and beta diversity across any of the time points or groups. Finally, the authors analyzed the blood of all of these athletes. Now, across both groups, four analytes were assessed. The only difference that was found was in the non-concussed athletes, probably because the sample size of the concussed athletes was too small. In the non-concussed athletes, there was an increase in glial fibrillary acidic protein during the playing season, and a link between the abundance of E. rectali populations and the levels of serum amyloid A and S100 beta proteins in the blood. Now, to quickly summarize everything all together, the authors looked at football players who frequently experienced subconcussive hits and those who suffered a single concussion. These players were assessed across a single playing season and continued into the off season. The oral and gut microbiome alongside blood biomarkers were analyzed to see if there were any noticeable differences. Now, across both groups, they had distinct bacterial populations that decreased in abundance during the off season. Notably, during the offseason, the concussed players had decreased levels of Eubacterium rectali. When looking at the blood markers of all of the players, the non-concussed athletes had increased levels of glial fibrillary acidic protein 
and there was a link identified between erectile bacterium and serum amyloid A and S100 beta proteins. Not only do I think that these identifications are exciting to investigate and learn about, they're also significant in a broader context. This information is significant because this data shows that among football players, reduced eubacterium rectali is correlated with sustaining a concussion. The authors also found that certain blood biomarkers are also linked with erectile levels. This gives us multiple biomarkers to potentially indicate a concussion, allowing players to get appropriate medical attention that they need for their head injury. All science is basically a stepping stone for new knowledge, and these steps are driven by questions. And I had a few questions myself after reviewing this information. One major limitation of this paper is a lack of non-football playing controls and how their microbiome looks. The information here is still insightful and could be combined with other studies in a meta-analysis to get a broader picture of the microbiome. However, how might the microbiome of non-football players look? And how might it change the results of this study? One football team is also not a lot of people to be looking at. So how would the results from this study look if multiple football teams were studied? And would it be different if players were in different parts of the country, not just in Texas? Football is just one of many contact sports. So how might the microbiome of concussed athletes look in other team contact sports like rugby or even in individual sports like in boxing? As always, my final question revolves around you. What sort of ideas or questions popped into your head when hearing about this information? I would love to hear about them in the comments section below. Also, let me know if there are any topics that you'd like to hear about in the future. Ultimately, I hope that you learned something, but more importantly, I hope you enjoyed your time doing so. If you did, give this video a like and subscribe for more in the future. Well, that's everything for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.